My name is James, and today is Monica, and assisting us from home with this presentation is our third group member, Lauren. Today we'll be discussing a scandal that rocked the financial community to its very core, and even today still leaves its scars upon any in unfortunate victims of it. I am, of course, referring to the case of Bernard L. Madoff Security Investments, led by Bernie Madoff, this delightful bloke on screen. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Bernie was an extremely prominent businessman and all-round financial guru who rose to fame during the 80s and 90s. He was the former chair of the NASDAQ, obviously a position of great renown and influence. And indeed, the entire Madoff clan was known far and wide across the American and worldwide financial community, with Bernie and his two sons running the company he founded. It cannot be overstated how influential this man was known as a wizard of investing with a long track record of getting ridiculously consistent returns for his clients. If someone told you Bernie Madoff had a proposition for you, you jumped at the opportunity. So where exactly is this story going to turn? Well, you see, in 2008, the world experienced the global financial crisis and the catastrophic impact of this event caused widespread withdrawal of investors globally as people scrambled to get their hard earned dollars back to safety. This had the unexpected consequence, however, of exposing Madoff's scheme, the largest Ponzi scheme to date, in fact. The company was reporting an investment pool of over $60 billion, with a capital B. However, the truth being that only roughly a quarter of this money was ever really in existence, and the investment fund was never capable of turning a business profit at all. Uh, just to quickly recap exactly what a Ponzi scheme is, we've found a quick video that runs through the basics of how it operates. Okay, now I'm going to talk about um, the ethical issues in this case. So, but, I mean, it's an understatement. He, um, there were many um, ethical issues in this case. So, uh, Bernie Madoff falsified um, information such as returns and balance sheets to benefit himself and the ones closest to him. He violated um, the trust his clients put in him. He used his reputation in order to run his Ponzi scheme. He used only a solo auditor, um, which was Freeling and Horvitz, who verified his books internally. Um, according to a professional accounting standards, auditors uh, need to be independent and unbiased when ensuring um, the financial reports are a true and fair view of the position of the company. Um, Brian Madoff did not separate the roles within the company, which breached um, the objective, objectivity principle. Madoff did not provide any professional or technical knowledge to his investors about their returns. He failed to provide any professional competence and due care which investors should be able to expect. Okay, we continue on with the um, 
corporate principles. So basically the three pillars of corporate co governance are transparency, accountability, and security. Um, so corporate governance aims to provide um, a framework for um, companies and investors to know that they are actually um, acting ethically and being able to um, attract new investors um, to continue their business. So in this case, um, the um, another slide. Yeah. Okay. So the first principle that I, um, we use for structure the board to add value. So basically, it's important for a company to have a board that has um, independent directors who um, are able to um, detect any of um, question any of the management's decision and um, be able to um, be able to change or question how they're running the business. Um, the next one is the listed entity should instill and continue to reinforce a culture across the organization of acting lawfully, ethically, and responsibly. So basically it's important that um, an entity articulate and close its core values and close its code of conduct for its directors, senior executives, employees, and the board will be informed about any misconduct. In order to achieve this, it's important for um, employees or anybody working in the company to um, have the adequate knowledge and technical skills to be able to act ethically. And it's also important that any um, misconduct should be reported to the board to be able to follow it up. Um, and the next one is safeguarding the integrity of corporate reporting. So basically, um, an entity needs to be um, have an external auditing a safeguard to make sure that um, all the books and all the reporting are above board so that they behave and act ethically. Okay, next slide. Okay, so we've got um, the agenda theory and the shareholder, the stakeholder theory for this case. So basically, the agenda theory is basically because the um, investors and the manager are, are separate and um, shareholders delegate the managers to act to um, run the business on a day-to-day -day basis, and this can um, have an, a conflict of interest. And the shareholder theory is just going further, or stakeholder theory goes further in saying that um, not only the shareholders are affected, but the wider community. Alrighty. Okay, so, all these talk of principles and ethics leads us to an ultimate question that needs answering. What could have been done to actually prevent this scheme from ever really occurring? And to answer this question, I say this. The Madoff family was so totally and thoroughly borrowed into the financial sector and its decision-making councils that it made any true, unbiased attempt to look into Madoff effectively a pipe dream. As far back as 2001, an accountant named Harry Markopoulos attempted to have Madoff investigated, but was effectively swept aside. I mean, how could a Ponzi scheme worth $60 billion exist? This is the real world, not Hollywood. However, it did, and it went undetected for a decade. And it isn't too far of a stretch to say that without the GFC ruining the market, Bernie may never have actually been detected. As long as money was being funneled into this and not taken out, he could have kept doing it forever. As such, we believe three factors would have led to either the prevention or much early detection of the scheme. Uh, number one, auditing standards place professional skepticism and unbiased opinions at the pinnacle of importance when conducting any audit. Considering the widespread influence of the Madoffs, um, Bernie especially, this was made nearly impossible. Um, in one example of this, a lead investigator was actually married to Bernie's niece. As such, no company should ever be allowed influence over so great a number of decision makers and overseers to ensure that an unbiased investigation can always be pursued. Number two, no single individual should control too many functions and operations in a company. Bernie Madoff effectively ran the entire wing of the company that was responsible for the scheme, single-handedly controlling the operation. This meant he could act with impunity. Um, and with no second opinion or any other party observing what was being done that could have detected the scheme. As such, all companies must submit to a separation of duties to ensure, uh, to enhance control and detection of any fraudulent activities. Number three, 
it must be mandatory that external investigations be undertaken when any credible, well-sourced complaint is levelled against a company. No entity should ever be considered too large or too influential for investigation or too powerful to be in the wrong. If Mr. Markopoulos was taken seriously, the entire story would have been cut short well before it ever reached the proportions that it did. And in truth, the lack of an in-depth investigation is perhaps the greatest failing in this entire event. In summary, it is the duty of any and all financial companies, great or small, to ensure they act in good faith and protect their clients and the wider community from unprincipled, unethical criminals such as Bernie Madoff. While he may currently sit in jail, his victims still to this day have not received their full investments back and truth be told, they may never get them back. It is imperative we remain vigilant and adaptive to any and all threats to the safety and security of the innocent investors that allow our economy and indeed our world to prosper as it does. Thank you for your time and we appreciate your attention during our presentation.